What's up everybody? In today's video, I wanted to discuss the book Chaos by Tom O'Neill. I first heard about this book on the Joe Rogan podcast. It's a book about the Charles Manson murders. This book isn't about self-help, not necessarily the topics I talk about on this channel very much, but I think there's still some lessons that can be learned from this book and the stories in this book, even though it's a little bit weird. This book st starts out with discussing the Sharon Tate and LaBianca murders in Los Angeles in 1969. Gives an overview of the murders, and then it goes into a bunch of conspiracy theories about the murders that happened in this book. And this book came out about a year ago in 2019, 50 years after the original murders. It took the author 20 years to write this book. He did 20 years of research to write this book, and it's a pretty good book. I liked it a lot. I listened to it on audiobook. It's about 16 hours of content. I really liked it because there was so much information. I love conspiracy theories. I think a lot of people like conspiracy theories. It's just psychological. We're either fascinated by it because it's a dark side of ourselves that we don't explore, that we think we're capable of, or where we think that maybe some of the stuff that happens in these books can happen to us, true crime. But there's so much information in here that there's a lot that can be learned. But like I said, it starts out with the murder scene. Then the author immediately goes into talking about Vincent Bugliosi, who was the prosecutor on the Manson murders. And he also wrote Helter Skelter. And Helter Skelter is the book about the Manson murders and then the ultimate theory that Charles Manson believed that there was gonna be a race war and that was motivated by a Beatles song that he heard. And the author spends a whole book basically refuting this premise, going through Helter Skelter and the flaws in it and the prosecution of the Manson murders and everything that was wrong with that. The one thing that I didn't like about this book is that there's like no clear conclusion and Tom never really gives his own ideas. He just kind of paints you towards an idea, towards a conclusion, and then just leaves it there. And his literary agent told him how he can just show how all these conspiracy theories and then the people can draw the conclusions themselves. But I think there's a ton of conspiracy theories in here and none of them are closed. And the book doesn't end with anything being closed. It just presents a whole bunch of information and then that's it. But the book is about all these conspiracy theories that could have potentially caused the murders of Sharon Tate and the LaBianca family. And then it, it shows that it could be related to revenge on Terry Melcher. And Ter Terry Melcher was a record producer that was going to produce Charles Manson. And that was Bugliosi's main theory that Manson was trying to show Melcher what he's capable of because he didn't sign him to a record deal. Another theory that the author floats is that Manson could have been part of a CIA mind control program where they were experimenting with LSD to see how they can change people's minds. They could get people to kill on command and not remember it. And there's a lot of information here about how Manson was around various CIA people during MKUltra and MKUltra was this CIA program where they tried to perform mind control on the general public in the United States, even though the CIA is not allowed to do that in the United States. So that was pretty cool to learn about that. I wasn't aware of that before. I was, I was not alive in the 70s, obviously. So when all this information was coming out, I didn't know this information. So it's good to learn that. So after I finished filming Chaos, I remember that I wanted to discuss something about mind control because that was one of the central theories of the book was mind control by Charles Manson and by the CIA. And it's rumored that the CIA and Charles Manson both used LSD and they would use LSD to sort of get to people's subconscious. And this is what people do in hypnosis. And that's why I think hypnosis is very central. But also when they access a subconscious, what they're trying to do or what they were trying to do was trying to get to the person's ego. And our egos are our identities of ourself. We're, they're who we are. We think we're these upstanding citizens. We think we're these people that have high values. But if you go into people's subconscious, which is always running in the background and you reprogram that and you say things like life doesn't matter, death doesn't matter, then that's how it's theorized that Charles Manson and the CIA could get people to kill other people and not even think twice about it. There's a story in here about a guy who was in the Air Force and he had migraines and he just randomly killed and raped a girl and he didn't remember why he did it and there, he had like no history of violence, but he did get some help from a doctor that was connected to the CIA 
and this guy did tons of therapy with him. So it's thought that maybe he could have brainwashed this guy to kill somebody. But I think that that part of the book provides a lot of information about our minds and how you need to take care of your mind. And you also need to remember your subconscious is always watching everything you do. So if you do a bunch of bad stuff or you're around bad people and that say bad stuff to you all the time, then even if you're not paying attention, for example, when you're doing LSD, your mind can be reprogrammed to do certain things. But I mean, you can use this in a positive way as well. You can self-hypnotize, put yourself in a trance and then get yourself to do what you wanna do, or you can go to a hypnotherapist but you need to be careful. You need to make sure that you're on the right track, that your ego, your idea of who you are is what you want it to be. Otherwise, you need to improve it. But you also need to safeguard yourself from being around bad people and listening to bad things over and over again. So that was just something else that I wanted to add to my chaos book review. Another thing was that Manson was potentially part of an FBI program. FBI was trying to infiltrate the hippies and the black power movement and trying to undermine them by putting their own agents and potentially having Manson do violent things could have been part of this program because Manson was violent his whole life. He was a felon. He was in prisons his whole life. He doesn't really fit the role of a hippie. And then just time in his thirties, he got out of jail and he was able to stay out of jail mysteriously, even though he violated his parole many times. And this, the author tries to show that maybe this was various government institutions keeping him free to undermine the hippie movement. Another theory was that maybe the murders were part of a drug deal gone wrong. There was a person in the house that got murdered that was a drug dealer and maybe he owed money or maybe it was just a drug deal problem going wrong and that everyone in the house was a victim of a drug deal gone wrong. There's also people in the house tied to the mob and it's thought that maybe the mob had something to do with the murders as well. That's like the general overview of the book is just tons of conspiracy theories, tons of information, tons of things that don't connect, that don't make sense. Like if this is true, then why did the prosecutor do this? Why was Bugliosi on the case? There's so many questions that come out of it and there's so many inconsistencies across the board that the author shows. And I like conspiracy theories. I think it's really good information in here. It's really crazy, all the stuff that happened. And, and I think, even though I said before, the author doesn't show one conclusion or he doesn't come to a conclusion at the end of the book, I think he was trying to show something or he was in search of it during part of his research. He was trying to show how there was one single effort leading Charles Manson and the family to murder Sharon Tate and other people. He was trying to show that it was either Jolly West and the CIA, or maybe the FBI, or maybe his parole officer, or some kind of government institution. He was trying to connect the dots to get that to be true, and he wasn't able to do that. And but, but I think what he ended up showing is that everyone's lives are impacted by multiple things. We're impacted by our friends, families, society, our desires, and our habits. There's no single one thing that leads us to do the things that we do in our life or pursue the paths that we pursue in our life. And Charles Manson was a victim of many things. He was a victim of a bad family, being in prison for most of his life, potentially drugs, um, potentially government institutions, society. There's a lot of things in here that influenced him. And there's a lot of things that influenced his followers and the people in the government that might have influenced him. There's no one thing and society is very interconnected. And I think that's what this goes to show that little things in your life can add up and, and make you go in the wrong direction or make you easily follow something very badly. What can we take away from this book from a self-help perspective since that's what my channel is normally about? I think just looking at the author himself, Tom O'Neill, one person can accomplish a lot and can change a lot and can cover a lot about people and the government. He spent 20 years devoted to this book and he uncovered a lot of information on the murders that nobody had ever looked into. And when he started writing this book, he believed there was nothing more to write about the book, but he kept on digging and digging and he found more and more stuff. 
And he put tons of hours into it and freedom of information, discoveries, and looking into lo local governments, local sheriff's office, police offices. He found a lot and he was able to uncover a lot. And if more and more people did this, they could change the world. But it also shows how one person in Charles Manson changed a generation. And he might not have been the one thing that changed it, but he was the tipping point, him and his family. And he was able to have a large influence on the people that followed him, obviously, because he got them to de devastate their lives and other people's lives. So one person can make a difference in your community and in the world. And another thing, another lesson you can learn from here is you better have a plan for your life. Otherwise, somebody else will. And this shows like Charles Manson, his followers, they didn't have a plan for their life necessarily. He took advantage of them. He took advantage of their past and maybe their violent histories and manipulated them mentally to get to do very bad things. But it's also the case in the government. There was many people involved in MK Ultra and other stories in this book that did bad things. And they did bad things because that was their job. And I think if you don't have values or a plan for your life, it's easy to slip into bad things. And the story is really about people acting very poorly. And I think a lot of the people that acted very poorly didn't have plans for their lives or didn't have values. And you need to establish those values and think about those values frequently. Otherwise you can end up doing very bad things. And think about the family members under Charles Manson. This devastated their lives for the rest of their lives. Some of them are in jail for the rest of their lives, but even the ones that got immunity, they had to live in complete secrecy because everybody's always coming to them, accusing them of terrible things. And this terrible thing paints the rest of your life and influences the rest of your life. So you have to be thinking about that and you have to have a plan for your life. Otherwise somebody else will and might take advantage of it. And that's something Tony Robbins always says, like you better have a plan for your life Otherwise, you'll be fulfilling somebody else's plan. And another thing this book shows is people with bad families are at a disadvantage. Like Charles Manson, he was born to a teenage mother who abandoned him frequently and, he, and committed a crime. And then he ended up following in her footsteps and he ended up doing very bad things. And maybe his mental illness too that came from that. But it's people with bad families definitely are at a disadvantage to doing bad things and you really need to work on yourself and work on your family history if that's the case to heal wounds otherwise you you're capable of doing bad things because if you're raised by a bad family you're taught many bad things many bad habits and you need to undo those because it's easy to fall into bad things and, and get into really bad situations and that's why i like to read books about family history and psychology because a lot of us don't do the work. We try to close that off, but it ends up ruling our life. And when I go through the books like shadow work, it's it's those dark sides of us that end up taking over because we try to stuff them down. So you need to look into your family history and heal those wounds. Otherwise, you might be let it out in other ways. Another thing about this book that validates some ideas that I have is like learn about psychology and hypnotherapy because the CIA used a lot of it back then and they probably use a lot of it now and like it, you there's so much government corruption in this book and you think oh that's in the past the 70s were crazy but if you read the news today all this stuff is still going on the government that we don't elect is still doing a bunch of nefarious things and in order to not get caught up on it you need to learn about psychology and hypnotherapy because hypnotherapy isn't what it seems everybody thinks it's a little timepiece getting waved in front of your face, but it's not. It's wording that's used on you that can get you to do what other people want you to do. And it's suggestive wording and you need to be aware of it. Otherwise, people could take advantage of you. And that's not even just getting controlled by CIA. It's getting controlled by media, social media, sales techniques, marketing, you know, watching Netflix. There's things in there kind of that can just change your perspective into something negative and it might not be making you kill somebody, but it could be things that don't allow you to make progress in your own life. So you need to learn about psychology and hypnotherapy to keep your mind strong and keep your mind stable and positive so that you can make positive changes in your life, but also other people's lives. Another lesson from this book is be careful who you hang around with. 
terrible people, hanging around with terrible people can have terrible consequences in your life. For example, the people that followed Manson, and they thought they're going into this free loving, free society. But what ultimately ended up happening is that he started telling them these prophecies and had them do violent things. And the most violent people of this group did violent things. And there might have been, there might have been less violent people in the group, but they ended up getting caught up in criminal activities as well. So you have to be careful who you hang around with. You have to observe them because it could have potentially terrible influences on your life. And it's easy to fall into terrible groups or tell terrible people because we all want to feel loved. We all want to be vulnerable, but being vulnerable to the wrong people could have terrible consequences. And same thing with the government institutions here. There's people in government institutions that did terrible things. Like there's people that could have violated Manson's parole and put him in prison, but they didn't. And then there's also people that were involved in mind control programs and they did terrible things to people. And that's documented in this book. And it's just, don't get caught up in those things. Don't get caught up in those situations. And that leads me to my next point. Don't always think in short term gains or wins. Because if you're always looking to the short term, you might do something easy now that's really bad for your future. You might do something that feels good now. Like it feels good to be around people that pay attention to you, but they might be toxic people. It feels good to do a good job or to keep a job that seems safe, but is doing terrible things. And that's really thinking short term because a lot of the people in these stories that did terrible things, whether it's Manson or other people, it, it ends up blowing up the whole rest of their lives. And it's because they were thinking short term and they weren't thinking long term about the impacts it would have on their lives. So I think that's what most people need to think about. You need to think about longer term. You need to think about yourself in the future, an impact on your life and other people's lives. There's so many lives that were devastated in here and it's just short term thinking. Another obvious thing that isn't necessarily for personal self-help, but for overall societal help, is government needs more oversight. Especially the government that we don't elect because there's so many bad actors in here. And I haven't even mentioned the Kennedy assassination, and I haven't even mentioned the Kennedy assassinations discussed in this book. The CIA and the FBI were involved in many bad things during this time period, late 60s, early 70s. And it's all members of the government that we don't elect and they're doing terrible things. So I think the government in this area needs more oversight. The people need to keep them accountable. I'm not sure we need more government institutions to look into the government because they don't seem to be doing their job either. I think there needs to be people like Tom O'Neill and journalists that are constantly looking into this stuff and, and constantly keeping these people accountable because they're doing bad things. There's so many members of the CIA and the FBI and they don't seem to be and they don't seem to be doing good things. And I think the lesson there too is that power corrupts and we need a way to prevent the power from corrupting these people. And I think it's oversight and it's oversight by us, the people and journalists to keep these people accountable. Well, that's my overview of the book Chaos and some of the tips I gained from it. I do recommend this book if you like conspiracy theories or just true crime stuff. It's a really good book. It's a lot of information. And once you start the audiobook, like you won't want to put it down. It's really great information. To get my book reviews and self-help advice, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.